In the West, starting in the Middle East thousands of years ago, a new idea began to emerge. This idea is that of the divine individual. You see the emergence of the idea of the divine individual as, as part of divinity itself. Our free societies, or the free societies of the world, are predicated on the idea of the sovereign individual. The West has long been the civilized embodiment of the idea of the divine individual. But the West is in grave danger of losing its way. The negative consequences of this can hardly be overstated. It's the enemy of the idea of the individual, the sovereign individual, which is the central idea of the West. A close reading of 20th century history indicates, as nothing else can, the horrors that accompany loss of faith in the idea of the individual. And for me, the individual is to be primary. Don't be racist. White privilege is the ability of white people to organize as groups, and in so doing, defeat any enemy. If we could convince white men to live as atomized individuals, cut loose from their families, they will never win wars again. Ha 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 ha. Jordan Peterson's rise to stardom a few years back was not organic. It was planned, with the help from the very media that would later pretend to attack him. And the right-wing scene foolishly embraced the Canadian-controlled opposition, presumably because Peterson's um, apparent defense of Western civilization and Western values hit a snare among us. But right from the start, Jordan Peterson's message has always been that of discounting the European family in favor of life as a radical individual pursuing your own self-interest. He calls this ideal the divine individual or the sovereign individual and claims that it is even uh, rooted in Christianity. It turns out that Jordan Peterson's message is that of a radical feminist such as, for example, uh, Shulamith Firestone, who believed in the deconstruction of the Western family. A man afraid of being one, Peterson apparently believes in the liberation of women from the childbearing family life that is supposedly oppressing them and that uh, women rather than men should be allowed to pursue their material self-interests. Uh, this in itself contains a red herring argument since men who start families are just as well bound to family life as the women are, men perhaps more as providers and defenders and women as nurturers and caretakers. But certainly it isn't actually true that uh, men have freedom, uh, unlimited freedom, whereas women are always uh, oppressed and that the, the freedom of men comes at the expense of women. And to realize this fantasy of feminist liberation, Jordan Peterson uh, has been acting sort of as the sheep in wolves clothes, uh, only here to infect us with foot and mouth disease. Uh, his intention is to break down Western social structures, including our nation, including our race, which are all based on uh, group ties, uh, uh, blood bound ties between family members and, and related peoples. So he wants you to believe that it has always been European tradition to, to worship the individual as some kind of sovereign entity. And even though he also admits that this ideal in the uh, sovereign individual, the divine individual, was not actually invented in Europe, but rather in the Middle East, not a place people normally think of when we speak of the West. Peterson and his allies then uh, are no strangers to falsifying uh, our Western European history. Uh, one of his allies appears to be Ricardo Duchesne, a Puerto Rican born now American citizen who wrote several books that have also drawn large uh, right wing audiences such as um, The Uniqueness of Western Civilization and Faustian Man in a Multicultural Age. And the titles alone uh, speak to me. These are the sort of books I would want to read, except Duchesne falsely claims that this hyper-individualism that Jordan Peterson promotes was somehow always a European ideal, always part of the European peoples, but it wasn't. Students of European uh, old literature, such as the old Norse sagas or extant Germanic literature, uh, show a very different story. Though it's true that Europeans have an idea of individualism, but if you read the Icelandic sagas, you'll find that the sort of individuals who become heroes, they do so precisely because they are being supported by a family. 
all the old European heroes believed that they were fighting for something, for their families, and never just in their own self-interest, never for their own economic advancement. European peoples and their offshoots have simply never regarded themselves atomized individuals, as Jordan Peterson would want you to be, as though we were mere uh, uh, playable characters in a video game where we can uh, give ourselves a new identity each morning we wake up. Now, men like Peterson and Duchesne have in some way truly confused uh, the, the thinking of the, of the Western right-wing scene. That is because they have presented correctly uh, uh, the individual free Western man uh, against the Far East unthinking collective. The problem here is, is that Europeans actually live in a third way, which is the family. The family is neither a collective, such as in the East, nor is it a, a group of, a collection of atomized individuals only uh, vying for their own uh, survival. The Western family, then, is actually the antidote against the unthinking collectivism of the Far East and also against the hyper-individualism of the Middle East. But since Jordan Peterson can only reason from his own Middle Eastern perspective, he misses the point, or rather, both of them. Uh, I'll read these to you. One, long before the arrival of Judeo-Christianity, Europeans traditionally counted among their ranks unique and strong personalities. The Babylonians did not need to invent European individuality for us. Rather, Europeans already had it naturally. And two, the European individual does not suffer from a boundness to an all-encompassing whole, such as the nation or a faith, this doesn't drag him down. Rather, he rises to astonishing heights precisely because his kinsmen are there to support him. And in return, of course, we as individuals support our kin. Anybody who thinks that a European individual can somehow find strength in his own atomization to, to live as a, a lone narcissistic individual will find out that you are building a house on quicksand. It doesn't work that way. Moreover, ancient Europeans worried more about what their ancestors might think of their actions today uh, rather than the fame that their descendants might carry forward. The thing that mattered most to an ancient European was um, how well his forebears would think of him upon his arrival in the afterlife. The forebears would want to know, did you fight for your people? Did you defend the honor of your kinsmen? Or did you merely live for yourself, as Jordan Peterson recommends? The modern ideal the one peddled by Jordan Peterson to be a, a radical individual pursuing your own material self-interest, that is the faith of the narcissist, the religion of narcissism that plays no role in, in European history, uh, does not play a role, and never has. European man's highest ideal is to be welcomed into the afterlife and to be embraced by one's ancient family. It is through our blood ties that Europeans can live free. And herein lies the greatest threat to the collective of atomized individuals. For if Europeans stand ground together, if we join together in the fight against collective individualism, then we will win. And this is why they hate us so much. This is why they give us Jordan Peterson and Ricardo Duchesne as sheep in wolves' clothes to pretend to be us and to try to somehow corrupt us from within. They hate us because they know damn well that if Europeans would rise to their feet and stand side by side, shoulder to shoulder, no one will ever defeat us. So remember who you are, Anglo, Roman, Greek, Slav, Celt, German, Nord. Remember, remember the men who came before you, in whose footsteps you are living, and say no to the cult of individualism. Atomize. Move to the big city. Cut ties with your family. Embrace your uprootedness. The divine individual does not need friends. Whatever you do, do not form groups. Do not start a family. 
Sleep with random strangers. Do not fight as tribes. Be an individual. Do not fight your globalist masters. Pursue your material self-interest. Be selfish. Buy more stuff. Do not resist. Don't be racist. Pride in European tradition, like 12, 12 rules. Uh, which one do you find the hardest to follow yourself? Probably uh, the hardest one is to tell the truth or at least not to lie.